Hi, hello and salam everyone. Welcome to Archit's Reads and Travels. I am not Archit, I am Nancy. And I am here today to talk to you about This Mournable Body by Sitsi Dangarambwa. It is one of the six novels that have been shortlisted for the Booker Prize in the terrible 2020. Yeah, quite terrible. Now, This Mournable Body is actually the third book in the trilogy that has been written by the author. The earlier novels, Nervous Conditions and The Book of Nod are actually quite fine, intense and quite eloquent pieces of writing. But it was the subtlety of This Mournable Body which struck me as both refreshing and complex at the same time. Now, the trilogy is actually set in Zimbabwe the country that attained a rather short-lived independence from colonialism in the 1980s to only fall back under a rather brutal, corrupt, dictatorship-like regime in the 1990s. Now, it is these times that the trilogy is set in. But essentially, it actually tells us the story of a young girl who eventually becomes uh, a middle-aged woman, uh, Tambu Zai or Tambu. Now, when we meet her in this mournable body, she's at a rather precarious time, at a rather precarious point in her life. Precarious why, you might ask me. It's This time in her life is quite precarious because she's unemployed, unmarried and living in a hostel where she's completely, constantly reminded that she's not eligible to live there because of her age. Now she eventually does move out of the hostel. She goes and becomes a widow's tenant. She gets a job as a biology teacher in a school, even though biology was never her subject in college. Uh, she has a mental breakdown. She ends up in a psychiatric ward, or at least what looks like a psychiatric ward. Uh, she moves in with her cousin, who she hates absolutely. She moves out of her cousin's place, gets a job, quits that job, gets another job. Now, these are many life events that happen in the life of Tambu, who you and I might also relate to. But rather than these events, it is the telling, the description of the everyday incidents that lead up to these events, that build up to these events, is what gives the novel its distinct strength. If we think about the narrative style, the whole novel actually is written in the second person. Where Tambu is constantly, all the time, referring to herself as you. While this can be read as a certain detachment, distance or even alienation from oneself one, uh, when one is actually being constantly oppressed. But for me, it was this unflinching voice and the gaze of a witness who doesn't miss on anything that's happening around them, that's happening in their lives, especially if it is their own failings, their own hypocrisies and their own weaknesses. Now, Tambuzai is not our patronizing, self-righteous, claiming to know it all kind of a protagonist. Rather, she's like one of us. She's complicated, she's contradictory, and she's so crisp that she's constantly breaking. What really stood out the most for me in the novel and uh, in the trilogy also, but more so in the third part of the trilogy, was the complete and absolute lack of excess. Dangaremva is so economical, so minimalistic and so very prudent with her words, with her expressions, with her language. No incident in the novel, no emotion, no character, no relationship is attributed any exaggerations. By this, I don't mean that the writing in any ways is dry, but it is precise enough to garner the exact emotion that it aimed for. For example, what really disturbed me for a long time actually was the scenes of sexual violence in the novel. They're so subtly written that I had to go back to them multiple times to be sure of what I was reading. You know, there was no build up to these uh, moments where sexual abuse happened, 
no excited response, no panicked deliberation on how everything is turned up. Reading these scenes was extremely difficult for me. And at one point, I even wondered, you know, if this novel should come with trigger warning or many trigger warnings. But what does this minimalism actually mean? What does it actually do? You know, this matter of factness tone that the book, that the narrator assumes, what does it point towards? One might say that indeed it point to, points towards the matter of factness that these incidents of violence have assumed in the times we live in. Constantly, actually, Tambu is also observing this routine patriarchal violence and she says that it fills you with an emptiness that hurts. It is this precise emptiness that is written in the words that we encounter in the novel. This novel is actually a wholesome experience in the sense that from the mere, you know, words to the sentences to the greater narrative that it is weaving, all of it is in absolute rhythm with each other. The sometimes long sentences, they take us to the many layers of thoughts with which the characters are, uh, you know, existing, they are thinking, operating. The minimal language is quite successful in creating the world full of horrors and unspeakable acts that our characters indeed inhabit. And the narrative style with the ever-present you and the one witnessing that you becomes our trusted confidant in the world where trust is in fact rare and even manufactured. I also thought that the titles of the novels in this trilogy have been chosen rather intelligently. For example, Nervous Conditions actually takes its name, uh, takes its name from Sartre's uh, preface to the very important uh, The Wretched of the Earth written by Franz Fanon. And uh, the quote also features at the epilogue uh, and I quote, uh, the condition of native is a nervous condition. Uh, similarly, actually, this mournable body takes uh, its cue from Teju Kole's uh, New Yorker essay called Un Unmournable Body, which was written as a response to the overwhelming outpouring of grief over the killings of uh, the French satire magazine Charlie Hebdo's uh, journalists um, back in 2015. In this remarkable essay, actually, Cole discusses why some violent deaths uh, can be commemorated while others can't be. And she, he actually goes on to underline that uh, one can't attend to each outrage in every corner of the world but this selective outrage that we display actually uh, makes some bodies worth mourning and others un unmournable. And uh, Sitsi Dangaremba has actually inverted Kole's title and by doing so, she's also claimed that the bodies that she is writing about are indeed mournable, no matter even if the ones, uh, you know, with, with self-claimed authority do not agree with her. I thought that these titles were very reflective of uh, the task that Tanga Ramboa has taken upon herself in the trilogy as its writer. The writer, again, you know, she uses symbols such as the womb or the behind of a woman to tell us that how fragmented these women can feel in their own self, in their own bodies, when violence is such a central part of their everyday life. Relationships between sisters, between colleagues, between cousins, between the mother and the daughter, between the domestic help and the mistress of the house, all of these women, these relationships are constantly being probed at in the novel. And at moments, the writer might even feel, you know, fed up and ask this question whether all these relationships are simply and merely the product of the structure and the situations in, in which 
you know all these relationships are embedded and as women we can ask ourselves that if ourselves are so fragmented if our sense of life is so shattered and if everything is so predictable if solidarity even possible is it possible in its fainted avatar i wouldn't say that the novel answers these questions in any way or in any completion but i think that it does enough by invoking these questions in the reader's mind i was actually left with a very important question and a very strong one for me which was that are we all as women condemned or blessed you know to turn out to eventually become like our mothers our aunts our grandmothers and our great grandmothers in the end i would like to say that uh, i thought that the novel was quite quite well written it 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 uh, displayed the brilliance at many levels at the level level of the language at the level of sentence structure at the level of the narrative style you know i think uh, the author has done a brilliant job and i am uh, thankful to the booker yeah yeah very thankful that they introduced me to this novel i hope all of you read it um and i will be back with uh, uh, not a review but just a conversation about um uh, brandon taylor's real life very soon bye well this was nancy's review of this monable body if you liked the video please press the like button share it with other people comment on the video subscribe to the channel and if you're interested in reading the book the link is below in the description thank you